Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to Arc Basics, a show where we break down the ABCs of how to start an arc, how to accomplish things, how to achieve things, how to be the best you possibly can be. That's right, we're going with the full ABCs of arc. A for arc, B for basic, C for, well, whatever you want it to be. C can be anything. Hey, Mr. Bronto, just walking around like you got nothing. I mean, seriously, you have no care in the world unless a T-Rex comes up and starts biting on you, huh? Right? Ah. Okay, so, as this Bronto right next to me kind of uh, demonstrates, these guys are big and rather unwieldy. I mean, if you've seen the um, arc basics for the Bronto, you know... It just stuck his butt in my face. All right, all right, all right, that's fine. That's fine, I guess. I'll deal with it. But yeah, um, see, when it comes to land mounts that you are able to put saddles on, you your choices are very, very limited. I um, mean, you can go with the traditional route, the Bronto, or you could go with this other route, which is the Pariser, or the Pariseratherium. These guys, they are smaller than the Brontos. Uh, they are actually, they're a lot smaller. But when it comes around to their health pool, their stamina pool, their weights, honestly, they're extremely comparable. They and even all right, this guy's really he's really trying to get in frame. I'm just saying, all right, he's gonna walk over me in any second, isn't he? Yeah, Mr. Bronto, you're being replaced by other things that aren't you. All right, all right, but yeah, uh, the Paraceratherium, um, while they are smaller than the Bronto, they are um, much more maneuverable. They're much more uh, able to get in to uh, smaller situations. They're actually able to carry quite a bit. Now, um, they, um, when it comes around to their saddle here, let me see. Their saddles are really, really low on the Engram list. You can get the um, oh, the regular saddle form at level 41, which is, I mean, that's pretty low level. And then you can get their platform saddle at level 50, which is really, really good. Now compare that to the Bronto, which is 63 for the regular saddle and 82 for that saddle. I mean, and also this saddle right here requires a lot more, um, a lot more materials than the Pariser, which means that you can have all, you can use these things, I mean, granted this does cost quite a bit, but it's, it, it's, it's peanuts compared to the Bronto one. And you can get this one at much lower level, it costs less Ingrams, and honestly, these guys, they're smaller, they're tanky, they're beefy, and you can put all sorts of different things on them. Now, the one thing I will add that the Bronto does have over the Pariser is that you can put more stuff on the platform saddle, which is a good thing, and kind of, in my opinion, a bad thing, because if you have that many slots, you're gonna use them, and then you're gonna end up running out. At least that's my experience. But yeah, all right, so uh, let's actually discuss a little bit more stuff about the Pariser. And let's get away from this Bronto. This Bronto, you, dude, you're just needy, all right? You're needy, go away. All right, let's go talk about the Bronto, uh, the Pariser. Oh my gosh, now you're getting my thoughts even. Really, really, dude, go away. All right, so taming a Pariser is actually super, super easy. Um. I mean, honestly, you could do it on the back of a raptor. You can do it on just about anything. Now, taking these guys out in the wild, you can seriously do it on foot with a crossbow. It's pretty dang easy. It's like a, it's like a um, a Bronto. When a Bronto is charging you, you can knock it out with a crossbow just by running backwards. Seriously, it works. It works well. I've done it many times. When it comes around to the Pariser, the exact same. Now, I need to find my saber tooth. All right, so finding um, Parasurs on the map, it's actually pretty easy. Really, when it comes around to it, um, if you're on the island map or, well, for the most part, just about any map, uh, just go to the places where it's warmer. Uh, the swamp, the redwoods, uh, stuff like that. Um, and on the island, the one that I'm on, it's pretty much localized to the very center of the map. So if you're looking for these guys, go to the center of the map. Trust me, you're gonna find them. And when you're over there taming other things, which is usually the way I normally do it, um, I spot quite a few of them. Usually they're high level because it's most annoying when they're high level because when you accidentally hit them, it takes longer to 
kill them to get them out of the way. So that's one of the things. And through the course of just playing the game, I usually find quite a few of these guys that are high level. Um, that way there, if I want to, I can just come back and tame them whenever I want. But yeah, um, these guys, when you find them out in the wild, uh, just make, make a special note of them. Or if you see a really high level one, go get it. Cause these guys, they are really, really good. Um, when it comes around to just their absolute tankiness and the amount of damage they can sponge. Now I'm saying that because, uh, for the PVP players, that's a big thing is how much damage can they sponge, which while granted, it's not nearly as much as others. It is more than quite a bit and these guys when bred they actually have quite a bit of um health I mean actually more than rex's it's really really impressive just how much hit points these guys can get all right and also with they ha with them having such a lower level saddle finding the um rare ones in the loot drops is actually I mean come on face it how many do you have sitting in your uh, um in your shelves I know I have quite a few of them just sitting there. All right, so let's go out. Let's go find one. All right, here we go. Right over by this side of the uh, swamp. Just right on the other side. Here's actually several of them. Let me see. Here we go. What level are these guys? Level 35... Level 35. Okay. I actually want a little bit higher level one for this demonstration. Normally, when it comes to the basics, I'll just show you guys um, exactly how to tame them. Uh, with these guys right here, I mean, it, it's laughably simple just because how slow and cumbersome they are. Granted, it's not nearly as bad as a Bronto, and uh, but it is really, really easy. You can just run on the ground and then, yeah, it's, it, it's pretty simple. All right. Let's go see if we can find a higher level one. All right. So once you have your sights set on one... Just grab it, start pulling. If any others aggro on it while you're doing this, I mean, you can just pull them aside and then knock them out that way. Or you can take them out. But it is really, really easy to just drag these guys wherever you want. All right, so we got this guy finally knocked out, and apparently it is knocked out on top of the dead one that we... Hello? <laughs> And the music's like, I ain't done with you yet. All right, so yeah, this one is on top of the other one, which is the body here, 3 minutes 29. That's no problem. All right, so now when knocking these guys out, I mean, see, look at this. Pre-tame, even his health is uh, already really good. So yeah, and uh, we're just going to be using their preferred kibble, which is superior kibble. All right, see you guys in a little bit. Once this guy's up and about, and then we'll uh, get into the uh, saddle making a uh, little bit and what all you can do with the saddles on these guys it's actually kind of impressive all right so this thing is up and it stats as it eats all that rest the, actually you know i'm gonna keep that all right so uh this guy's stats actually turned out pretty good i was hoping for a little bit higher health pool this guy actually has a rather low health for a pariser um but has really good melee damage which is Kind of not what I wanted, but uh, then again, beggars can't be choosers. So, all right, we're going to, um, but the biggest thing here is the 1326 weight. Now, that weight stat right there, especially on bread and imprinted ones, you can pump that up wicked high. So, it gets up really high. Same thing with the health, and also, if you want to, melee damage as well. So, where these guys, they are, I mean... There's a reason why these guys have uh, platform saddles available to them, especially on uh, and these guys when it comes around to making mobile bases. I just want to say that on scorched earth, especially these guys can be quite invaluable. Just the fact that you can build a base on it and you can just travel around everywhere with it. And then a lot of the smaller dinos, the raptors and direwolves and stuff like that, they will not aggro on a pariser. So, yeah, that's a big, huge bonus in the pariser's favor. All right, so now that we've got these guys, now the regular things they can do, yeah, they can uh, they can harvest berries. They can harvest berries a lot of berries if you wanted to. I mean, quite a substantial amount. That's if that is your given intention. Also, uh, in the uh, wood versus thatch debate, they harvest a lot more thatch than they do wood, but they do also get wood as well. All right, but so we will take this guy and uh, go out and we'll see just what his regular hit does. And also, like I said, while they're sprinting, if you run over the small things, they're going to trample them. They're going to do trample damage, much like the Bronto as well, which is pretty cool. 
right? Like 20 points of trample damage. And this guy already hits for 162 right out of the box. I haven't leveled this guy at all. Granted, he does have a little bit more uh, melee damage than I was expecting, but that is still really, really good. All right, so now that's pretty much the thing. Now they don't have a C attack. They don't have a right click attack. It's just you ground pound and you trample. And that is really about it when it comes to these guys. Now, like I said, bred and imprinted, this guy right here is actually kind of a beast, even though you are a bit of a target sitting on his saddle. Now, let's pop off this saddle and let's get into the nitty gritty of what this guy is kind of, I mean, one of his like little special powers, because he is able to have this uh, platform saddle on his back. Granted, it is smaller than a lot of the other ones. It's about the same size as the Plesiosaurus, um, but it's, you know, a lot smaller than, say, the Bronto. Or, you know, and much smaller than the Titanosaurus. So, all right, but let's get covering a few things on this because there are quite a bit of options, especially since this guy is so much more maneuverable. I mean, look at this. We can literally run circles around this Bronto with this guy. Yeah, it, the Bronto is going to be tankier. The Bronto is going to be beefier. But the Bronto is also... Well, face it, Bronto's slow, right? All right, now when building on these guys, you can seriously just take and you can just put like a, say if you want to put a ballista turret on here, you could absolutely do it just like that. Just put it right down on here. You don't need anything. Or you could actually take and you can put uh, foundations down. You can sink the foundations just like normal into a regular saddle. And then uh, um, like, yeah, you would anywhere down below. But for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to sink them. I'm just going to build up on top of here just to demonstrate just how um, easy this is. Now, you can actually go like that. Uh, go. And then we're kind of inside the foundation. But, yeah. Um, okay. And then so for up here, now you notice we have six foundations up here. Let's go. Give ourselves a little bit of protection. Oh, wrong button. I said six, ten. All right, and then so for up here, we could either take, we could put like a ballista up here. And if we wanted to, we could actually put just a cannon on the back so where we could go tame like a golem or tame a titanosaur on the back of here, which is absolutely something that you can totally do. It's right like that, bam. And then with, uh, if you uh, increase the amount of weight this guy can hold, it will actually, uh, I mean, you'll be able to hold quite a few of these cannonballs. Cause these things are heavy, 20 pounds each, but with the Parasaur, it's totally doable. And then now we actually have a mobile cannon platform that we can just move around. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually take and we could put, instead of the cannon, we could go with just a smithy. And then we could go with Refining Forge. I mean, granted, the metal's gonna add up pretty quick, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, honestly, if you have if you have the desire to do it, you can totally do it, which makes these guys kind of a, a multi-use tool when it comes around to just being able to take your base, whatever, anywhere you wanna go, and then be able to do it. Or say if you want to have a mobile area that you can uh, take and put in a cannon on the back so where you don't have to um, put it down in one single spot and then when it comes around time to just move it that uh, you end up having to break it and rebuild it. You can just put it on the back of a Parasaur and you can have it anywhere you want to. Which makes these guys actually rather, rather useful when it comes around to things. Also, like I said, with their increased health pool, these guys, they're, they can actually add up quite a bit. All right, so that's the Parasaur in a nutshell. Honestly, I wish I could cover everything that you could build on the back of these guys, but that would be about an hour long video, just going through all the different iterations that you could put on the back of these guys. It's, it's pretty impressive. And honestly, the imagination is the limit. So, hey, I hope this video helped you out. Um, I hope uh, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, make sure you click that like button. It really helps me out. If you're new around here, subscribe. And until next time, this is Fligger Foo, and take it easy, everybody.